good morning. My name is Shauna Thomas. And as Tom introduced me, I have actually been a part of Cyprus U. It's been a privilege. And thank you, Tom and Marsha, for continuing to um, have us continue to come back and to have the privilege to work with you, to work with your groups. Um, in 2016 um, is when we launched with Cyprus, I think, full launch. And we definitely have had the opportunity to work with many plans and, and brokers and account reps. And at that time, I would say that we knew what our goal was of taking care of the patients and giving them a true benefit, not taking away benefits, but actually adding a benefit. And we knew that we were going to be able to offer a savings through our model but I don't think we really knew the relationships that we were going to create with our patients because we were there during a time that they really needed somebody more than ever to help them navigate through this world of healthcare. And if you yourself or anybody in your family has ever needed a surgery, or possibly they weren't even diagnosed yet, they just knew something wasn't right, it's really nice to have somebody come alongside of you and to help you through that. And so I, it's a privilege to be able to share some of those stories. I will definitely save time for that because I think it's key. Uh, but I think also the other piece that we didn't know that was going to happen is the amount of surgeries that we are able to actually look at for medical travel. We started off with just you know orthopedic, spine surgeries, very complex surgeries general surgeries, gynecology, uh, areas of sinus. Um, of course, continuing to look at specialists that we have access to, we learned that cochlear implant on the plans that cover that. Uh, we're able to get that implant for cost. The list continued to grow, and it has just been exciting to be able to, again, now tell employer groups, the ones that have us and the ones that will be adding us, hopefully shortly, um, that if you have a member who says, I'm going to need some time off of work, I think I'm going to need a surgery, you don't have to ask anymore. You can actually just encourage them to reach out because, again, our list is continuing to grow, and we want to be that person in their life that can truly help navigate them through this. And, again, I think that that is going to be one of the reasons why uh, we continue to see um, these strong endorsements um, from, from Cyprus. And, again, it, it's just a privilege. So thank you. So just to kind of get started. Oh, here we go. What is success? And, in fact, <laughs> each one of these bullet points, I could probably talk at least 30 to 40 minutes. Ask anyone in my office. But I won't, because I, I promised. Um, but I do want to just touch on, and I would very much encourage you to come talk to me uh, at some point today. I'll be here through this evening as well, because I do want you to understand, too, that success can be measured in many different ways. Um, but for us, uh, the first and foremost is that we are truly going to be a savings option on your health plan, a significant savings. Um, and so how we do that is that we are actually looking at the specific case that has been brought to our attention, and we're doing an evaluation on every single case to ensure that there's an actual savings. And with the examples that I'm going to share with you this morning, you'll see that in that analysis, we did determine that there was going to be a savings. But I will also share with you that if your members have a surgery center possibly in their community that's not overpriced, we will let you know that. And we will do a comparison to ensure that actually medical travel really does make sense for that specific case for that specific member. Now, in other scenarios, when we start to work with a group and we start to learn about your hospitals, we will also be able to share with you that we can tell you that if you have anything in this particular area, whether it be orthopedic or possibly sinus, claims data with working with Cyprus, we actually know that, in fact, we have seen the claims data from that local hospital, even after network discount, and we were able to then qualify cases based on real numbers. That's where my team gets a little geeky and we start really getting into those numbers and the analysis of that. 
But again, the significant savings both to the member and the plan is not our service, but it's what makes it possible. And that is key, of course, as well. Concierge service. There are so many steps that go into being able to help somebody before they actually have a surgery date. You have the initial diagnosis, talking to them about where to go for imaging, using a lot of the partners that they already have on their health plan to make sure they're going to the right facilities for MRI, CT, x-rays. We want to encourage them to utilize those. But that very first call, we're also explaining to them self-funding. Your members, your employees, they are specialists in their jobs, but they may not be specialists in what self-funding insurance is. In fact, they may not even realize they're on a self-funded plan. So our team likes to, on that first initial call, explain to them why it really matters that they look at being a better healthcare consumer. There is an awe moment in that conversation when the team member, the patient navigator, is able to explain to them in a very personal way how, yes, you have your portion, but the health plan is picking up the rest, and how that impacts renewals. And we relate it back to their own insurance, their homeowners, their automobile insurance. We explain to them that comparison, and there is this moment when they're like, I get it. I want to save my health plan because I don't really want to see my premiums go up. I'm planning to be with this employer for the next 20 years. So again, it really is at the time when it matters most, but we like to explain that. And then, of course, navigating through the system. We offer free second opinions through our service. There's no obligation to move forward, but there is an opportunity for them to at least confirm that they need surgery and that they're getting the correct surgery. That's very important, and it is something that I think almost every patient wants. And we've heard reason after reason on why they haven't gone in. I think the craziest one that we hear often, and some of you may even know what I'm going to say, they don't want to offend their doctor. Now, granted, that doctor is going to be taking a scalpel possibly to them in the next, you know, <laughs> few weeks, so maybe they don't want to offend them. But at the same time, this is such a major decision for them to have a surgery. And it, wouldn't you want to have another specialist, an expert in their field, also confirming that same surgery or possibly a different surgery option, maybe something less invasive? Maybe it's a different type of treatment? I was talking with Marsha, we're looking at stem cell treatments. I don't know where that's gonna go. We're ahead of the curve in trying to start to find providers in that area because it is something that I think we're going to be seeing more and more of. Um, so again, the navigation is such a big part of and getting that free second opinion. And that is a great way for them to actually be introduced to our surgeon that we're presenting to them or the surgeons that, that we're presenting to them. Added options. Who doesn't like to have choices? Many times, in, you know, the member's overwhelmed by choices at times, and in other times they feel as though they don't have a choice. So for us to be able to have our patient navigator talk to that member when it matters most, present to them highly skilled facilities, surgeons, that we have already vetted out for them in all areas, Everything from readmittance to, of course, the standard, um, any type of infection concerns, looking at all of those details on an annual basis. But even furthermore, that specific surgeon is tracked in our system, and we are expecting extremely high outcomes, extremely high quality feedback. We want our patients to come back to us saying, I would have gone to that surgeon regardless if you didn't cover all the travel costs and, and had presented them to me. That is what we are looking for. And our surgeons know that. They know that if a host care patient's coming to them, they are definitely seeing that they are happier patients, so they're coming to them because of all the benefits for them, but they are also, of course, um, wanting to ensure um, this highly skilled. And then, of course, first, and I think this is the priority, is, of course, the member testimonial. 
And this is the part where Tom, when he called and asked me, will you share the testimonials? Absolutely, because this is actually my favorite part of the job. It's the impact that we get to make on members' lives. And all the members I'm sharing with you today, all of our patients, I do have their consent. So these are their real identities uh, and their real photos that they share with us. We get photos all the time of the members and their grandbabies. Um, again, it's that relationship that we have with them. Uh, but Anita is actually a beloved uh, member uh, to a few families. The host care family uh, loves Anita, but also, as Tom mentioned, uh, she's actually also a Cyprus Benefit Administrator employee as well. And she has the provider relations representative position there. And if you have ever talked with Anita or had the opportunity out of the Omaha office, um, you become best friends in like the first five minutes with Anita. <laughs> so she shared with us on her initial call in, she called us directly. Uh, you know, again, congratulations, Cyprus, on communicating your own benefits to your members, because that doesn't always happen. So uh, she was a direct call in. She had learned that she needed uh, to have a knee replacement, but she wanted to learn more about her benefit choices. But we also learned in that first call with Anita, the patient navigator talking with her, Nita wasn't exactly sure who her caregiver was going to be following surgery. So if she even had the surgery at home, how is this going to work? She has stairs. So there was a lot of things that being processed in this call. It wasn't just of, let me show you a surgeon and let's you know, get you booked and scheduled. It was this whole process of, you know, am I going to be able to even you know, be at home? Am I going to be able to, have, will I have to go to a, a skilled nursing facility? So there was a process there. But we also then shortly thereafter found out Anita likes to travel. And Anita shared that she just got back from a trip visiting her best friend. True story, obviously. Anita's best friend lives in a community where one of our centers is located. And right there, it was this moment of, you got to be kidding me. This is just almost like fate that this is actually going to be this scenario. But Anita was still talking, and so letting her talk, she went on to share that her best friend, who would make an amazing caregiver for her because she just had a knee replacement the previous year. Asking the question, do you happen to know who your best friend's surgeon was? Yes, she, he went to the, she went to the best surgeon and shared the name. Chills go down often, and maybe it's the HR side of me. Chills go down my legs when I hear things that are just like I'm blown away. When I heard this story, the surgeon, one of the surgeons that we were going to present to Anita was actually the same surgeon that her best friend uh, had just went to. And when we said, would you be interested in going to this facility for your surgery? She immediately just was overjoyed because she said that would be the, an ideal situation. I could just stay with my friend. She could take care of me. That solves the caregiver's you know, problems altogether. Again, these are the kind of stories that we have on an often basis, and they're just overwhelming. But in this situation, it solves so many matters. And it's because we took time to find out more about Anita and about her story. So Anita did actually travel by airline, of course, from Nebraska to Washington. Uh, she ended up having um, all of the accommodations taken care of for her. She was sent a check prior to for a meal per diem uh, so that she can cover added expenses that she shared, that she shared with her friend, of course, staying at her home. Uh, the travel costs were lower because of, um, because of her stay with her friend, but the, all of the other accommodations were definitely covered uh, through the host care benefit that's offered through her health plan. Uh, and again, um, just again, making that a full, um, a full experience for her when it comes to having the right surgeon and the right pricing as well. Uh, wanting to share that her local PPO estimate was coming in, uh, estimated at $51,573. Uh, the total host care package for that was $34,123. What is included in that for Anita's case was the entire surgery package, the bundled rate that we were able to gain for her, including the physical therapy appointments that she was having while she was going to be there in Washington. In addition to that, the travel costs included, as well as the host care fee, because we are a case fee 
uh, company. We actually do not charge a PEPM. Um, and for that, we just want to ensure that groups can add us easily, as well as, of course, we want to ensure that there's always a return on investment for every single case. So that all being said, the total savings is 17,450. And Anita's portion of that, her deductible and co-insurance, so for her, it's her individual in-network out-of-pocket completely waived, was $4,000. Of course, including all of her travel costs as well and not getting those bills in the mail and all the other positives that come with that. And the health plan savings as well. That's a good day as well for any health plan. Um, and it's not, as, you know, it's not a six digit figure number, but we are now in 2019. Anita contacted us. It is time now to have her other knee. And the best compliment that I think that we could actually share with you is that her quote was, and I want everything to be the exact same itinerary as last time, because it was perfect. And that is, again, our desire is to be um, that solution to her. So again, just um, I could share so much more about Anita's story, but that's just, again, just some of the overviews of financially a savings as well, of course, as uh, making a great impact in somebody's life when they needed it most. Another story I'd like to share with you is Diana. Now, Diana came to us as a member on the health plan whose spouse is actually the primary member, the employee, and Diana didn't know about host care resources being on her health plan. So she wasn't a part of the employee meetings, the orientation, those types of things. She went through the normal process of she went to her primary care, primary care recommended her to an orthopedic um, spine surgeon, um, and was getting her surgery scheduled quickly. Through our model, we actually work with your partnered pre-cert vendors. Um, trying to get as many early alerts as possible, but one of the opportunities is if, if they've actually scheduled a surgery, that pre-cert is sent over as a notification to host care so that we can actually, within that same day, reach out to members and just introduce host care to them, again, when it matters most. So with that, we contacted Diana and let her know, you know of host care resources being on her benefit plan. Is this something that she was aware of? Well, she immediately responded, Really? This is something that, this doesn't sound, this doesn't sound like a real benefit. This sounds like one of those ARP uh, scams that they, they warn you about, you know? So definitely, you know, just, so she stayed on the line to learn enough. We, inter we definitely encouraged her to reach out to learn more about host care. She must have called her husband immediately, who then went to the human resource department Diana called back the next day and shared that she talked it over with her husband and confirmed that host care was a real benefit. This wasn't uh, something that was, again, too good to be true. And she very much wanted to get a free second opinion because she had been wanting a second opinion. But in addition to that, she wanted to learn a little bit more about where she'd be traveling to the surgeons that we would be presenting for her to consider. And through that, the travel plan that we actually came up with, the surgeon that she selected, uh, was based in Austin, Texas. This is within driving distance. Uh, it's a bit far of a drive, but she opted. She chose not to fly. She wanted to do the drive with her husband. And we took care of all the accommodations to make that consultation happen the next week. Our surgeon was able to find an opening and see Diana. With that, that proactive approach that we had Diana would have never learned about the host care benefit. But in addition to that, she too stated that the surgeon she went to, she had more confidence and learned more in that single consultation than she had learned with her previous surgeon after seeing him for approximately a year and a half. Again, that is the expectation of our surgeons. But how does that impact the plan? As well, financially, of course. This is what makes it possible. And so that local PPO estimate, mainly looking at the big three on this, so it's the surgeon, the facility charges with all implants, as well as the anesthesiologist, the estimate came in at just over 70,000. In some of your markets, that would be, possibly that would be a good deal. <laughs> um, but for her market, that's approximately what was coming in. And so through the total host care package, the estimated savings was $36,843. Of that, 
Diana and her husband, $6,750. That's how much was going to be waived for her calendar year for her out of pocket. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to anybody. But of course, getting to the right surgeon as well. And we continued to stay in contact. Diana actually sent us her testimonial and about six photos of her, her husband, her dancing after surgery. <laughs> um, so these are the types of, again, um, scenarios where we just get really excited because she was actually able to enjoy what she and her hobbies in life again. And of course, the health plan was happy that we were able to help her. And we have also um, just, again, continued to stay in contact with Diana. Richard's story. So my, my son is a high school senior this year. And I've been sharing with a few of you. I, I, maybe don't ask me about it because I get a little teary-eyed. Uh, but uh, he's going to be actually going into being a high school social studies um, teacher. That's where he feels called to go. He actually knew that in junior high already, looked at some other professions. But this is where he really feels. So when it comes to um, working with school teachers, I guess I, I, I especially have a special place in my heart for school teachers. Um, and we um, were fortunate because Richard didn't know about host care resources. But thankfully, we were added to their health plan, and we proactively were able to set up, again, the early alerts and reach out to Richard just prior to, it was two weeks prior to, him actually going in for his total knee replacement. Richard shared on that very first call with the patient navigator that he very much wanted to work with the best surgeon. So he was going to look at the surgeon choices that we shared with him, but he was pretty much made up. He made up his mind. Very much respect that. This is a completely voluntary benefit. They have choices of where to go but wanted to, again, give him an option. So shared that information with Richard. And it was just the next day again, he called back and actually said, the surgeon you presented to me, he is one of the top surgeons in the country for total knee replacements. This is just an unreal benefit. And you're telling me that I could actually possibly qualify for this benefit? and have all of my out-of-pocket waived? Again, just the, the conversation in that. He went on to share that this is actually going to be, he's going to have both knees replaced in the same year. Um, and so with that, um, you know, we had started putting together a plan for him. Last year alone, in 2018, we had approximately, it was 88% of our travel patients traveled via on the ground. So whether that be a chauffeur driver taking them to the center or possibly mileage reimbursement. So medical travel, again, is all relative, but you're not always needing to have your members fly somewhere, just depending on where their facilities are and where you're located and where that member's home address is. In Richard's situation, he actually only lived 65 miles from the provider that we presented to him. He traveled there. Within three days, we were able to get him a consultation. He was able to meet our travel surgeon, make the decision that he wanted to go that route and cancel his other surgery within the timeline. We don't encourage them to do that. We don't encourage them to, to make a decision until they've actually talked with the surgeon. Um, but again, because of the timeline, we were able to make that happen for him. Richard shared with us that one of his passions, in addition, of course, being a teacher, is also that he enjoys golfing. And so from this, we were able to actually help him within that year have both surgeries. And he actually, this is a post-surgery. You can see that smile in his face. This is post-surgery, how happy he is that he was actually back out golfing again within that next summer. We stay in contact with Richard as well. Um, he is now a retired member on the plan. Um, but again, just a, a really impact in his life. The local PPO cost uh, for Richard's case, when this was actually first shared, was $48,823. We've actually did claims analysis uh, in the last two weeks 
on that hospital, I can tell you that that was actually a very conservative number that was used. That specific hospital is now coming in closer to in the claims analysis in the upwards of 60, low 60s. Real numbers. So we're continuing to see rising healthcare costs. But one of the neat things about the host care and the partners that we work with in this area is that actually we're not seeing huge increases in our bundled rates. They're sharing with us the implant costs at cost. Some of them actually, actually send us a copy of the invoice. We don't require it, but they do, um, because they want to be completely transparent. And so when we are getting those knee replacements at 20,000, we know that they are still making a profit. So you can imagine, again, how we should all feel if a provider is actually charging over 60,000 for a, a surgery that should not cost that much in our country. Going back to uh, Richard's story, um, we had the total savings at 26,000, and his portion was 5,000. And of course, this was the first of the two surgeries. So he had his second surgery that same plan year. His 5,000 was already waived for that plan year. So of course, the plan saw an added 26,000 of savings. Now, we talk about stop loss. The impact there is that we have been the solution that they have been wanting in this area because we are getting ahead of cases. And many times, we're actually able to keep the surgery costs below the spec levels. So of course, they're not hearing from us. They're probably hearing from the brokers at renewal time sharing you know, all that good news, again, of the type of savings, that these type of cost containment solutions that are being put in place are working. And that's why you're seeing such low renewals. And again, my, um, I commend Tom and Marsha in Cyprus for seeing that there are solutions other than taking benefits away. You can actually add benefits and lower your costs. And when it comes down to it, your patients, your members, your employees are not going to be able to go um, and respond to that company down the street who's possibly trying to recruit them because their health care plan is so strong they couldn't imagine leaving that plan. So in summary, um, I would like to just end by um, sharing that there are many more stories. In fact, we have some groups in the room that have recently used us. Um, everything from you know, very complex spine surgeries to you know, ACL repairs uh, across the board. You know your markets, and if you don't, we would be happy to look at your market for you. Through a claims analysis, we'd be able to have you contact us. We could look at your 2018, what type of surgeries possibly could have qualified for medical travel. We know it's completely voluntary, um, but just knowing our pro proactive approach um, in reaching out to about 75% of the members and not relying on them to contact us if they need to has really made definitely a difference, I think, in the amount of type of activity that we're seeing. I want to thank you again so much uh, for your time this morning. And again, uh, please come see me afterwards if you have any added questions. Thank you.